This is Daniel Hall Pinella College. Today we're going to look at Predator uh, 212's head in a little more detail. Go over some um, quick tips uh, before we reinstall this and I'll show you how to lash the valve. So I'm going to actually completely tear down the valve train. So one of the things is these studs that your carburetor goes on. You have studs for your exhaust and you have studs for this. If for some reason you damage one of those and you need to get it off, this is how you do it. You take your nuts that held on your carburetor and you put two of them facing each other tighten them down against each other remember they're, they're 10 mil then get on the top one and if you've tightened them down enough you gotta get them pretty snug should be able to Work the whole unit again. Again, you got to get them tight. There it goes. So once you have it tight, pretty much tight as you can get it, you can walk that stud out. So if you ever need to get a stud out, that's how you do it. Put two nuts together, tighten them down hard as you can, and then just get on the top nut, back it out. They can be frustrating. A lot of exhaust components are stud mounted and they're rusted in place. So there's quite a few of these that you'll end up snapping off and have to extract if you work on exhaust manifolds for very long. Now your valve train. We've got rocker arms. We have lash adjusters, and then we have our valve train. So what I'm going to do is disassemble this unit. So we got two C-clips here that hold the pin in place for the rocker assembly. Should be able to get a pair of needle nose or a flathead screwdriver in here for this C-clip. C-clips tend to go flying. So once you get it broke, put your finger over top, keep it captured, or it'll fly and hit the ceiling. Then you can take the other side loose and of course if I had done the correct side first it would have just fell out I went the wrong way but we'll do them both once you get them broke grab it pull it now both C clips are out you can push that arm assembly through remove your rocker so there's your rocker there's your lash adjustment and there's your pin. Now to actually take the valve loose. So on the bottom side, this is going to be your um, intake valve. The intake valve is slightly larger than your exhaust, and it's usually cleaner. Uh, so it's sealed. The spring that's on the top is pulling up on the stud, sealing it in here. So to disassemble this, it can be kind of tricky. First, you have a little cap on the top that just comes off. That's what they call a lash cap. And then, this one is the keeper style. Some of them have little wedges in there where you have to compress the spring, pull the little wedges out, and they fly off. This one is a keeper style to where you push down, you rock it to the side, and it comes off. Now the trick is, when you push down, you don't want that to come down either. So, sometimes you have to put something, like this oil cap, under it to set it on. So when you push down, it doesn't give. And I'm not pushing down very far, I'm rocking it to the side. And then it comes off, looks like that. So you see the notch that's in there. It's lopsided, so you just, you just take a little bit of spring tension off of it down, and then you push it and it comes out kind of like taking a picture off the wall. Now, you actually can push your valve out. You got some oil sealing rubber uh, cap right there that just helps oil from splashing through that hole. But there's your valve, there's your 
intake, that's where your gas and your air would be flowing through from your carburetor coming in. Notice this has a bevel on it that matches this bevel and that's how a valve seals. As it goes back in there it seals. Now when you put valves in the engine, you have a tool called a valve lapping tool. Essentially you'll put a cutting compound on here similar to like a, a polish. You'll put them, you'll install them, and it's a tool that's essentially a suction cup on a stick. It'll stick on there, you'll sit here with your hand and you'll push down and roll it kind of like you're trying to start a fire. And what that does is it grinds that bevel into that bevel so it's perfectly seated. And the way you know you're there is you take a Sharpie and you color this bevel and you color this bevel. It's just like a machinist, uh, a little machinist trick. Color that with a Sharpie. It's oily metal. The Sharpie won't stick very well. As soon as it gets friction on it, it'll rub off. So you can sit there, spin it around one time, pull it back out, and you'll see where the Sharpie's gone and where it's still there, and you'll know if you need to keep cutting until finally you cut all the Sharpie off and you know you're perfect. Uh, but there is machines that do this in factories, but we visited an old uh, engine rebuilding uh, factory in Houston several years back. They rebuild white superior engines, and um, there was a guy there. His job every day, all day, was do it by hand. He had a little wooden dowel and a big, of course, the valves he was working on were a couple inches in diameter. But he would sit there and spin them, check them. After about every two or three spins, he would check them and then go to the next one. He hand lapped every valve. Now to go back together on your stud, again, put something underneath to rest on. Take your spring with your cap on the top, set it down on there, and you'll start at an angle, barely get underneath the head. There's a little notch that you're trying to feel for, and then it pushes back over, and this is the importance of the lash cap. The lash cap keeps it in the center to where it doesn't go come off, so once you put the cap back on there, now it's locked in, it cannot be slid to the side. Then you put your rocker back, arm back on, put your stud back in the center, and reinstall your two C-clips. Again, pay careful attention with C-clips, they tend to go flying. I usually take a pair of needle nose, go underneath the stud, go on the top of the C-clip, and push it down, they clip in place. like that. And that's how your valves are seated and sealed. Technically if you th thread the um, spark plug in here and put water in here it would hold it should hold water. It sh water should not drip through if everything is correctly sealed. If you have a valve that is leaking um, you're just not going to get the horsepower out of your engine or the efficiency out of your engine. So they should be watertight just off their spring pressure. These are 18 pound springs and that's one way you can check them is put a spark plug in there and put a little bit of um, food colored water or something in there that way you can see if it's dripping out. Um, but there's another way to do it. See there went my lash cap. So you gotta be careful with those that they don't fall off on you when you go back in. And that should do it for this video, thank you.